All right, let's see what we got going on. So, so there's still a minute. Uh, I think I'm broadcasting right now, but I'm not going to actually start the show for another 50 seconds. I thought I was going to have two minutes, but it took me longer to get the stream started as I thought. Hopefully this is actually working. We might start like a minute late, it doesn't matter, just to just to get things started and I'll do some editing later. I always say that I'll do editing later and I don't, but I swear I will this time. Um, uh, 30 seconds. Anyone can hear me? Can you hear me? Is, is, is that coming through? Let me just double check. It look, looks like it's doing stuff. I can see and hear you. Sweet. Good deal. Yeah, there's a delay. There's always a delay. All right. Oh, wait, what? It's dead. Uh, output too low to do. Wait. Actually dead. Why is it? it says stream health is bad. It doesn't say stream health is bad. Is it bad or is it? Hmm. Hmm. It says I'm offline. I don't trust it. All right, what if I hit refresh on here? Oh, OBS Studio disconnected, reconnecting. Great. Wait, why? Reconnection successful. All right. Um, yeah. That makes me worry. Great. All right. Yay. All right. Um, let's see. Now I'm really worried about it. Because it should just be working. All right, well, all right. I am recording. I should be able to recover if things go Just get it started. All right. Hello, and welcome to another exciting break. No, cooking with Unity. Cooking with Unity. Ver Let's start that again. Hold on, because I might as well get us started on the right foot here, right? If I'm going to be editing this down anyway. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Cooking with Unity Virtual Recipes. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and today we're going to be exploring the Virtual Reality Toolkit and setting up a basic, um, just the functionality of a Polaroid-style camera. For those of you who are not old enough to know what a Polaroid-style camera is, Polaroid camera is a camera that takes a picture of something and then prints out that picture. Uh, in the old days, they used uh, they used a, um, basically developer fluid that was put into the pictures themselves, and they would just self develop. Um, they would just take the picture like a normal piece of film, and then the, the film would develop itself as opposed to taking it to a place, which made them very convenient at the time when you know none of the computer stuff was around. Um, but all the computer stuff is around now, and no one probably knows what they are. But basically, what we're talking about is making physical, well, physical, virtual physical pictures out of what we see in a scene. So to start with this, we're gonna wanna look at some of the examples in the VRTK. So Virtual Reality Toolkit has been improving constantly. And every time I look at it, it's better. And there is no exception this time as well. Like it's, it, it's way better than the last time I used it. And there's a, just a huge number of examples that you can go through. Um, if you just download this project, you're already set up for, for Oculus and Vive. 
So just download the project, play around with it. Like check out these examples and you'll, you'll get some really cool stuff. What we're going to be using, actually, well, yeah, what we're going to be using primarily on this one is um, in the, where is it? All right, I'm going to just read through them because it's hard for me to actually read through when things aren't aligned horizontally. Grabbing and using, snapping objects on grab. This is what we want. So this one is, shows examples of objects that snap to a particular orientation when you uh, grab them. And so I'm going to hit play real quick so you can see this in action. So in this example, we have a variety of objects that are designed that uh, are designed to be in a specific orientation when you grab them. So like, no matter how I grab this item, it grabs as a sword. No matter how I grab this item, it grabs as a tube. No matter how I grab this item, it grabs as a gun and points in the right direction. So we're going to probably use this gun here as our basis. Is this gun the same? I don't know what's different between these two guns. But yeah. Um, so before I go further, though, uh, let's talk about what makes VR cool here. So everything in here originally was very well aligned and stuff, just placed in the scene, obviously. But if you were uh, making a game and you wanted to just change things to look a little bit more, more natural, in VR you can just grab things and place them in the ways that you want to place them. It might actually be difficult to set up in an editor. Um, and then, like, even if you don't have any code, well, I mean, not any code, like, obviously we've got gripping code that came with VR2K, but even if you don't make any of your own code, we can literally just go, how do I unmaximize this? Um, we can easily just go here, go to our example world objects, just copy it, stop playing, and then just paste. And then if we get rid of the old example world objects, when we hit play right now, look, everything's the way that we set it up. Now, imagine how long that would have taken if you were setting it up using Unity. Like, it was effortlessly for me to create a pile of garbage here, so... And that was, like, like even if we don't make any cool editor stuff, which we're going to make some really cool editor stuff, but even if we didn't make any, VR is already useful for placement. So I'm going to take a short break just to make sure that things are broadcasting if you haven't been having major problems. Yeah, talking about film-based photography makes people feel old, definitely. And I am old. All right. Oh, no, offline again. Really? Back? Okay, well, so something got lost. Anyway, uh, we're just going to keep running it. As I said, I'm recording locally as well, so if there are major problems, we should be okay. Um, so what we got going on? What does it say? It still looks good. So let's take a look at this gun. So we're going to go in here. We're going to just pick one of these, whoops, example word all objects, oh yeah, that's right, I copied and pasted them somewhere else. So there's two guns here, I don't know what's actually different between them, I'm just going to take the one that's called gun one, and just for ease, I'm just going to make a prefab here, and then we're going to create a new scene, well actually a new scene is probably a bit much. Yeah, let's just do it in this scene so I don't have, so I have some basis for things. Um, but we're just gonna temporarily take these uh, example world objects and remove them. Oop, go away. So um, what are we doing? So we've got this gun thing. I'm just gonna bring it back in here, and I'm gonna rename it to not a gun. We're gonna call this a full. Or, uh, we're gonna call this a yeah. Style camera. Oops. <laughs> Still has a thing like that. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this scene so that we don't mess up the examples for people. Um, I'm just going to save the scene as. Save scene as. Uh, we're just going to call it an assets right now. Um, we're just going to call this a polar. Uh, all right. 
So, well, it shouldn't have started with a camera because what are we going to take pictures of? But it'll still work. It'll be fine. Um, and we'll try it in a different scene too once we get it working and see how everything works. Um, so let's just go ahead and I'm just going to delete these things. Whatever. Delete. We'll just put the gun in the scene. anywhere and uh, let's just hit play real quick because as I said I don't like to spend all that time with numbers when I could just find where I place this oh it is already on the place anyway but but there now it's more convenient for me honestly I should probably set things up so I can just grab them in front of me um, I'm gonna be running into things at some point here uh, so whoops unmaximize and we will just, it doesn't matter, I was in a good position anyway. All right, so the actual work portion of things. So let's start with um, the basics. So we're gonna need a screen that shows what's going to be the picture that we're taking. And the way we, we're gonna do that is we're gonna set up a render target. So we're gonna need a render texture here. And we're just gonna call this, uh, Polaroid texture. We may change this later to be more programmatic just because if we want to have multiple Polaroid cameras, we're going to have to have a separate texture for each of them and things like that. So there's there's considerations, but right now we're just going to get the basic setup here. So we've got this Polaroid texture. We're going to create um, a camera. So we need a camera on our... Um, on our Polaroid style camera. So let's go over here. We're going to create a new, sorry, a new camera. Put this inside of our Polaroid style camera. Put it at, reset the orientation. And um, yeah, so it's pointed the opposite direction that I would like there. So, I don't know why they have these completely, or wait, it's a uh, local space, right? Yeah, that's local. All right, well, we're going to flip it around then. Um, because the camera is facing backwards right now, so we're just going to flip it around 180 degrees. And right now, is that right for how that camera should render? Tell. We'll play with it in a second. So let's create a, um, so we're gonna need a screen for this thing. And so the screen is gonna be uh, just a quad right now. And so we're gonna create a 3D object, no, 2D object. There we go, 3D object quad. And we're gonna put this in our Polaroid style camera. And we're gonna see which side it actually looks at. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and reset rotation, reset, reset the whole thing. All right, so we're going to want this one reverse too. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this quad. Um, yeah, we'll just reverse it. So, and it's way too big. Um, so let's make it less than a meter. Um, it's about the right size for a screen. I don't know. Um, let's just do 10 centimeters for right now. Z alone. And uh, it, it, Z doesn't matter in this case, just make sure it's not zero, that's the, really the, the key. Um, and uh, so this isn't gonna do anything just yet, so quad needs this texture on, so we're gonna just drag this Polaroid texture. That automatically created this materials folder and this Polaroid texture folder. I'm just gonna leave it there because we should have these things in folders anyway. Um, and we're probably going to put these into a separate project folder eventually, too. Um, pull it up camera, pull it texture. So now this quad is using that, and we're going to go to the camera here. And instead of rendering to the screen, we're going to render to the target texture. And if things go well, this will just work. Things don't always go well. Oh, it looks like it's already just working. 
sweet. Um, but the problem is it's through the handle here, but we're just going to fix that real quick. So let's make this clog a little bit further back. One, or two, I don't know, somewhere like that. Let's see how that does. Up oh, too far. But it is doing the thing that you expect it to be doing. So, yay. See how that goes. All right. Looks like it's the right orientation. Not that, yeah, it would could it could be the wrong orientation where everything would be always sideways. But yeah, so it's it's working, and uh, and yeah, and so this gun has the, you can you can shoot evidently other capsules, um, but you can shoot capsules uh, out of the gun. By default and we, that's useful because we're going to be using the use function in that to take our pictures so let's see real quick back to chat just to make sure that nothing's too crazy going on so all right nothing new oh stream health output low great is it working things to be working Oh, great. It's real choppy. All right. Well, I'm glad I'm recording this separate. Maybe that's part of my problem is the fact that it's streaming to me. I didn't even realize I was doing that. I really... Mm, this is annoying. Oh, well. Right, back to the project. Probably going to have to offline upload this, and that's okay. Because I'm recording it separately, yay. Glad I decided to do that. Um, so, back to what we're doing. So, we now have the Polaroid style camera. We need to make it do a thing when we hit the trigger. Right now, the gun already does a thing when we hit the trigger, right? And, um, and so, basically, this gun script is what we're going to be modifying. And actually, we're going to be duplicating basically so i'm going to just go to edit script and we're going to look at it real quick so what this does is um it does a override start using the bullet so start using i think is what is used uh to say that you're going to do something with the gun and um and then this just calls fire bullet which does this stuff down here now we're going to make this a little bit more generic than this actually this is already pretty pretty generic but we're going to make something called a public class usable and this usable is going to be um, just an object that sends a message every time that it's used. And well, not send a message. We're going to use um, Unity's uh, action system um, or event system. I don't know what it's called. We'll, we'll find it. And uh, and then that way we'll be able to just decouple it from code entirely. And you can just hook it into other scripts. And then we're, we are going to use some more code to actually make our logic. But we're going to have it in a separate script. So let's go ahead and do that. Where is this uh, script, actually? So we're going to look for uh, BRTK interactable object. Okay, I'm just going to copy this whole thing and paste it into a new thing. Then I want to find out where the file is. So create new script. Let's call this um, BRTK usable. And then we're going to open this file, supposedly. And we are going to just take this whole thing and paste it in and fix whatever problems that we've got going on here. We don't need this. There we go. So we're not going to need this. We're not going to need any of this stuff. We are not going to really need any of this stuff. Nor are we going to need this stuff. I'm going to keep start just in case. 
And what we're going to do is, so this just means pass it on to any uh, children. We're going to call this public class usable, actually BRTK. This is going to be, be based on BRTK interactable object, which um, is not resolving. Oh, because we're not using, using uh, BRTK. There you go. So save. So BRTK usable. Um, I guess since uh, I probably shouldn't call it BRTK because but it's associated with VRTK. I'm just going to call it that. It's fine. VRTK underscore usable. Let's try that. We'll find out that that's already probably used. So now instead of fire bullets, what we're going to just do is we're going to have a public. Oh, yeah, we need to announce this first. Uh, using the engine unity engine dot. Events and then public unity event. Yeah, so public unity event um, tests. I'm just going to make sure this works. Actually, we'll just call this um, event event to trigger save. So if we go into Unity now and we go into Polaroid Stealth Camera and we change, we're going to remove, we're going to add VRTK usable to it. Here we are. VRTK usable, please. Okay, well, let me pull it in there, probably because I already have this script on here. So I'm just going to temporarily remove this. Let's see how this goes if we add VRTK usable now. Script class cannot be found. Okay, so that's because I need to make this have a lower underscore in it. Match the class name. And we're going to drag it in now. We're going to go ahead and actually add. Come on. There we go. Uh, move it up. Know why that breaks the entry instance, but ah, cool. VRTK are usable. So drop anywhere, allow grab controllers, ignore controller, hold button to grab, stay grabbed on teleport, I'll drop, uh, hold button to use. So events to trigger. So this is what we added right here. Um, and the rest of it is the the old whatever is uh the base stuff here. Um, I probably should have kept, we should have kept the other script on here. I'm just going to undo real quick just to see what, what the state was. Okay, that went too far. There you go, back to there. Done. I just want to see is grabbable. Hold button to grab, stay grabbed on teleport. Usable, hold button to use. Use only if grabbed. Um, I can actually put both of these on right now. So, does it cause a problem? Okay, it does not cause a problem. It was just because my names were, up, were not right. Move up. Yeah, I know. We've broken the pre drive instance, instance like a bunch now. I'm just going to duplicate down here, uh, touch off and both is grabbable. I actually don't want, I want hold button to grab because I like that. Stay grabbed on teleport, drop anywhere, undefined, both uh, Polaroid style camera. So grab attach mechanic script that is here. It's good that we did this because I'm going to need it. So secondary grab action, don't know what that actually does. And then finally, is usable, hold button to use, I guess that's fine. 
Use only if grabbed. I guess we might want that. I'm going to leave that. That means that you can hit the button even when you're not holding the thing. And uh, all we're going to do now is create an event that triggers something. Um, oh, yeah, we need to actually show that it's doing something right. So we created the event, but we didn't actually use it. So we need to say uh, event, event to trigger dot um, invoke. So this means that when we get here, do all the triggers that people have set up in the events to trigger. And uh, let's go ahead and test this a little bit. I'm just going to create a debug log here. Debug.log. Log warning. Actually, just log is fine. Debug log. Um, Usable trigger. Let's go ahead and save this. Make sure that we get things that do the things that we're to do. All right. So, oh, it's still shooting things. Oh, that's because it has both scripts still. Say anything when I did those things, though. There's two audio listeners. We gotta fix that too, so that we don't have all the spam. Let me do that real quick. That's because on our Polaroid style camera, camera cameras by default come with audio listeners. We don't need an audio listener on this thing. All right, and then let's go back to Polaroid style camera. I don't know why this is called. Wait, what is this? I don't know why this is here. I'm going to hit apply here so that we get something here. I'm going to also hit save scene so that we get something. And just in case things go badly. Because at the end of the day, even if all the recording in the world breaks, if I have the project, I can at least share that. Um... So let's remove this gun script. Whoops. Move. No. Sorry, I'm not used to Windows. Uh, remove component. And this doesn't have to be on by default, I guess. Let's see if we get a script when I hit the button. So doo -doo -doo, it's not shooting anymore. Good. And it say it's doing a thing. Usable triggered. Good sign. All right. So, now we're going to make the thing that we're actually going to trigger, which is going to make a picture somehow. How are we going to do that? So, probably should have thought about this a little bit beforehand, shouldn't I have? So, pictures, pictures, pictures. So, we've got a texture, and we're going to copy out of that texture into another texture and create a material for that and then spit out a so we don't need to create a material we can we can have that already on already on whatever the camera thing so we're going to duplicate this quad i'm going to call this quad the screen but we're going to create a prefab might as well have it inside the object part of the reason that they do this inside the object uh, instantiation stuff is because if you make stuff completely self-contained in VR, it's really good because you're really just making tools, right? And you want to be able to just um, use any object that you create in any game that you have. Um, you'll start to see this a lot more in games. Uh, you've, you've probably already seen it if you're into VR. But games will um, sometimes reuse assets across games just because it's super easy to do it in VR and super useful to do so. So we're going to delete this bullet. We're going to duplicate this screen. the screen. We're going to call this a um, picture. This picture we're going to do a little bit differently. We're going to create a different material. Create. So the problem right now is, as I said, this isn't going to be totally self-contained because if you have two of these Polaroid style cameras, they will potentially have problems because they're going to be fighting over the render texture. But we'll 
fix that on another episode. Um, but we do need new material here. Create material. We're going to call this the um, just picture material. And this will actually get re-instanced when we change the texture because we're not going to use shared material when we do it. So we can create multiple ones of these without too many troubles. Um, so we're going to just put picture on here. And uh, picture doesn't have a whole lot going on for it. Uh, it does not have a texture set. Um, all right, I'm going to do a web search real quick. Let's see, uh, we're doing um, take picture, um, save render target to texture. Extract picture to render target. That's UE4. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Un unreal. I'm so proud of you. I did a search for something. And I, di I, I didn't get... Uh, oh, it's probably because I spelled it wrong. Render target. Okay, now, we got, we got unreal results. I'm so happy. Unity has been dominating the results by default. I'm so happy that I actually have to type Unity at the end. That's so awesome. Congratulations, Un Unreal. That's great. It's possible to save render textures into PNG files. I don't really want to do it to a file. Let's just see what we've got. Let's just play with the tools. So, uh, so this camera, so this polarized style camera has to do a thing. We have to take the image from one thing to another. So let's create a, let's create a new script called Polaroid style camera. Isn't that a lot? Now we're gonna just open this up. And uh, this is not gonna be a standard like um, update type script. This is just gonna be, well, it might have update stuff, but we're not using it just yet. Um, but for right now, it's going to just be the, uh, what we want things to do. And so all I'm just gonna create is a public function called um, uh, take picture. And this is where our logic is gonna be. Before I forget, I'm just gonna go ahead and hook this in to uh, where it goes. So all we're gonna do is throw this on to, whoops, let's have a return type. All right, um, public void picture. Save. And or is that camera, that's working now. You attach this to here. And inspector, this doesn't do anything by itself, but if we go in here and choose our own object and check out forward cell camera, we can do take picture here. And so now when we hit the button, it should run whatever function that we have and take picture. Let's test that by creating a very quick, uh, just debug, just debug.log. Taking picture. Save. Play. All right. All right. Why is it? Oh, it's because I've got that. There's another. So it's Z fighting with the untextured thing. So if I click the button, that's all we're checking right now. Make sure that works. So, did that do a thing? Console. It did. Taking picture. Sweet. So finally, uh, we don't want this picture to actually show. We're just going to make it visible. And we're going to spawn based on that. And actually, I'm going to look at that um, gun script again. Maybe I'm not. Um, so, this script that we just wrote is going to need a render texture um new texture target uh, let's call it rt and we're gonna make we're gonna need what else picture prefab so picture prefab so that'll be just a game object 
Picture of prefab. And both of these should be public. Again, this is relying on a separated thing. Again, we'll be fixing that in a later episode. So render target RT picture prefab. So let's see what we can do here. So if we have, um, we have actually, let's not even do game object. Let's do material picture prefab. I think we can do that and get an instance for everything. Let's just see how it goes. Um, so if I go here and I see what we've got so far, I didn't save, did I? I did save. It's not done. There we go. So, uh, we want the picture prefab to be picture here. Okay, so that doesn't work. If I could do the renderer, right? Yeah, let's do that. I guess I could just okay, but we're gonna be using the renderer. Yeah, game object. Not be fancy. All right, take picture. What we're gonna do is instantiate picture prefab. Sorry, I can still use the model develop. Picture prefab as um, as game object. So game object picture instance equals picture prefab as game object. Um, and we actually want it to be in the same position as picture prefab dot position. Uh, transform uh, position. Um, and uh, picture prefab dot transform dot rotation. Ah. Transform dot rotation. All right, so this will give us a new picture at the place that the old picture was at. Remember, it's attached to the gun, it's just invisible. Uh, we're going to do Picture instance dot active equals or set active rather set active true. This will make it so right now it's not active in the hierarchy because we don't want to show it unless unless there's something on it. Then we need to do some stuff with it. So picture instance. Let's do um, picture. Let's do render picture render equals your instance dot get component um, render should give us whatever type of render it is and some mesh render in this case. Um, and now, hopefully, from here we can do something with picture renderer to do some cool stuff. So picture renderer dot material dot texture. So get texture. What does it do? Do name texture. Name texture, set texture, yeah, that's not going to be enough, right? Because the texture, oh yeah, well that's right, RT is what actually has the thing, right? So RT dot, what have we got in here? Depth, trailer, create, discard contents equals, generate mips, get native texture ID, get native texture our usage, that's cool. This isn't looking great. System Okay. Yay, more stuff to fast forward. It's probably not even streaming anyway. Actually, let's see what's, what's going on. Let's see how people are saying. They're all, they're all like, oh, he didn't practice again. A little choppy here and there. Apparently working on multiple parts of the battle game using Unity for my senior project in college. And your videos are very helpful. I'm glad they're helpful. Glad you're back on tutorials. I'm glad I am too. 
So. What he got? Color buffer. There we go. The color buffer of the render texture. Gonna search for that real quick. Uh, render color target of color buffer. Dot color buffer. Why is it? All right, I'm just gonna go here. Um, let's just target. Not render texture, sorry. That was my problem. I was searching for render target. And I should be searching for render, render texture. Render. Oh, here. We're here anyway. So, color buffer. Color buffer. Sure. Super useful stub. Thank you, guys. Um, Especially if you're lost in certain areas. Well, we got part of it, and that'll be a short episode once I cut all of the stuff after it. Um, where is just getting a duplication? Get a frame from render target movie render texture. Pixels render texture. Look good. Let's see. Text dot read pixels. Sure. Okay, that's text. All right, so text is. Oh, I see. Read pixels of the rect read picture. Rect read picture is. Wait, what is rect read, read picture? Let's just read from the normal frame buffer. Okay, so. Alright, take your 2D read pixels. Take your 2D read pixels. Alright, from screen. So, so what they're doing here doesn't actually do the thing that they think it's doing. Sweet. Or maybe setting it active matters? Draw to it as necessary. Get temporary render textures like temporary. So I guess we could just camera render into the render texture, the temporary one. I'm going to explore this on my own. I'm sorry that I burnt so much time, and uh, I'm sorry that it was not a great episode. As usual, it's been it's been you know three bad episodes in a row, but that's okay. And and like I don't think you guys can even see this anyway because it's all screwed up. So uh, anyway, um, we're gonna call this a night. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, sorry 
excuse the bumpiness while I'm getting my stuff set up and figured out. Um, this I thought was going to be a good option to record here, but I, I guess it's not been as good as I thought it was going to be. So thank you guys very much, and I will see you later. Have a good one. Uh, eight people, just playing eight people at a time right now. Stream health, video output low. I still don't know if that means anything, but we'll see. Hopefully this will all just work. I'm just going to stop streaming, stop recording.